So what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Amber J, and I'm I'm hopping on here really, really, really quick. Um, hopefully it's really quick, but I want to encourage someone. Um, the Lord had pressed it upon my heart to encourage someone. Um, of course, this is kingdom spouse related. And let me tell y'all something. Let me just say for the people who say, I'm tired of y'all talking about this. I'm tired of y'all talking about that. Let me tell you something. This is a work of God. When you have it in a nation where they're talking about they don't know the difference between a man and a woman. When they got the LGBTQ, ABC, 3D, whatever it is, all this here going on. You best believe that God is trying to, excuse me, he's not trying to, but God is um, letting the world know what his idea of marriage is and his intention for what it is and what it ought to look like. So, yes, I'm going to keep on pushing out this kingdom marriage words. Why? Because the enemy keeps on pushing out his agenda. So, yeah, shots fired. But anyway, let me proceed. Man, look. <laughs> y'all y'all can tell. Y'all can tell. Before I started walking with the Lord, I had some heat with me, okay? Like, for real. But anyway, glory be to God. Glory be to God. God gives glory in everything. Yeah. So, let me get back to this word. Man. Anyway, so look. <clears throat> the Lord had pressed it up on my heart to deliver the word and give encouragement to um, who, whoever this is for. You are weary and you are doubting that your God ordained spouse or your kingdom spouse is going to leave the counterfeit. You're doubting because you haven't heard from them. You guys are separated. You guys are not in communication and um, you don't know what's going on on that side. Right. And you may have heard some things. You may have seen some things. You may have even seen some things on social media that's kind of like contradicting what God has told you right and it's hard right and you're trying to um you're trying to keep hope alive you're trying to keep your faith alive because you know what God told you but right now you're just like man it's just so hard it's just so hard because not only am I not hearing anything not only am I not you know we're not in communication but I'm actually seeing things as an opposition of what you told me Lord it's getting hard to believe God knows this God is good Look, the Bible says God is close to the brokenhearted and came to console those who are contrite or crushed in spirit. He hears your cry. Look, God is God. All right. He's omnipotent. So I want to encourage you to let you know this. <laughs> they are going to leave. They are going to leave. And I feel it all in my spirit. They are going to leave. I am going to give you Bible scripture and I'm also going to give you my a few testimonies as well. I've actually been through this situation twice in my life. Yes, twice. I can attest to this in two instances. OK, about how a person can be so in love, invested all in so many years. I mean, it just be like head over heels in love. Right. And when I tell you like that <laughs> and it just be over with i'm telling you i'm a, I'm a testament to that okay so look let me start off uh, um in the bible i'm coming from second samuel right and i'm starting off at chapter 11 please go back and read it in your spare time just for time purposes i am going to read some verses but then i'm going to paraphrase and just you know just move it along okay so we're starting off at verse excuse me chapter 11 right and here we have david right this is king david Okay, um, he sees Bathsheba, right? And I'm just going to jump straight into um, verse two. So I'm in second Samuel chapter 11, verse two. And it says late one afternoon after his midday rest, it's talking about David, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of the palace. As he looked over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. He sent someone to find out who she was. And he, he was told she is Bathsheba, the, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. And when she came to the palace, he slept with her. She had just completed her purification rites after having her menstrual period. Then she returned home later when Bathsheba, excuse me, discovered that she was pregnant. She sent message to David saying, I'm pregnant. All right. So look. This relationship between Bathsheba and David started off in lust. 
right? It started off in lust. It was just something like, hey, this girl looks good. You know, he done made it to king. He in the palace right now. He feeling himself. You know, he done let stuff get to his head. He high and mighty. So this relationship between these two people, it did not start off as love. It did not start off as anything God ordained at all. Right. It started off purely as lust. And then, whoa, hold on. Wait a minute, girl. I didn't mean for you to get pregnant. You know, I, I, I you, you was just cute. I didn't mean for you to get pregnant. So David, because, you know, I'm just moving on, moving a little bit further. David, because now, you know, um, he has authority and he's in power. He's seeing for his men to go get Uriah. He wants Uriah to hurry up and come home and lay with the girl. So to make it look like it's Uriah's baby. Mind you, let's just stress the um, point again. This was not a relationship that was based in love. It was based in lust that went too far, right? So now David is trying to cover up this whole little scandal, right? He, he's trying to cover it up because he's king. He's known as a man of God, right? Um, this girl gets pregnant. He know the baby is his. He don't want to shame her. And he don't want to seem like, look what he did to one of his boys, right? Like, come on now, David is going through some stuff, right? So he sends for Uriah to come back to the, you know, to the palace. And his intention is for Uriah to go back home to sleep with his, you know, um, Bathsheba to make the baby look like that's between Uriah and Bathsheba. Uriah never goes home. He stays in the palace palace he is you know committed to his duty so long story short as you uh as you move forward now we are in um we're still in uh, chapter 11 um david then has uriah killed you know i mean th that's the only way that he could you know i here's the because here's the thing about it god does not support everything we do god will not support foolishness okay so i just wanted to stress the fact again if you think that what they got going over there um is blessed but if it didn't start off as blessed god does not bless a mess he fixes a mess but he don't bless it. That's like putting lipstick on a pig okay that's like spraying air freshener when you need to clean your house no 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 so God don't bless a mess. Okay. So, you know, just to reiterate, David is trying to clean up this mess. He's not getting any support from God because God is like, uh, uh, are you not, I'm not backing you up in this garbage. <laughs> you know, I'm not backing you up in this. So, um, long story short, um, just in that instance, because it's, the story hasn't ended between these two. David then has Uriah killed. God sends Nathan, who is a prophet. Now we're in Samuel chapter 12 to rebuke David. And he tells David, David, this is what you did. God does not like it. And you have brought a lot of calamity upon your family. And also that baby will die. So what started off? As just some, hey girl, you hot. You know, him just trying to holler at her. Now she pregnant. Now I'm trying to cover it up. Now I done brought calamity in my house. And you mean to tell me the baby gonna die? Well, hold on. Let's backtrack, you guys. If the baby was gonna die, then why did David have to kill the man? Do you not see all of this is what's going on, David, right now? So let me just put it this way. Let's say fences, um, David is your guard or dang spouse, right? And Bathsheba is the counterfeit, right? You mean to tell me that <laughs> all of this, that your kingdom spouse is going to stay in all of this over a lust? He never wanted the girl. It was just lust. God is not going to bless that thing because it was birthed in lust. So, as stated before, your guard ordained spouse, the reason why you're not hearing from them right now, because they're trying to clean up a dirty mess over there. I stated in one of my videos, I think I made that video last week about praying for this person because 
whatever they're going through right now is is dark. <laughs> it ain't good. And they don't want to taint you with it. See, when you came into their life, you brought light into their life, right? When you came into their life, you brought hope. You was like God in the flesh, right? Not that you were perfect. No, you're not perfect. But everything about you, your heart, your posture, your stance, uh, uh, um, your, your qualities, your mannerisms, everything about you resembled God. And they only see you as holy, and now they're looking at you and they're thinking about the situation that they are in. And they're like, no, 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 no. Please understand. And I'm telling y'all this from a personal experience point of view. I've went through this before. Although you are uh, not in communication with that person, they're not communicating to you. They are still praying that God keeps you. Let me tell you something. You standing for this person is not just God telling you to stand for this person. You having the capacity to stand and believe for this God ordained marriage in this relationship is because of that person praying for you. I'm telling you from experience. And I'm going to get to that. <laughs> and I'm going to get to that, okay? That person is praying that you don't move on. That person is praying that you don't find somebody else. That person is praying that you don't wake up and, you know, get all real and snap out of it and get into reality. You know, this person is praying that you don't have somebody in your ear saying, uh-uh, leave that person alone. See, so while this person is cleaning up their mess over here and trying to get things resolved in a little way, because guess what? God ain't blessing this mess and they done got the, they, they know now. They got the notice now. God ain't about to fix this. I got to fix this. I got to walk through this. I started this and it was dirty and I knew better and I knew God was not. Hold on. Let me, let me backtrack. It's how you know <laughs> this person is not going to stay with this person. God does not, for his children, God does not allow you to fall into a pit without giving you at least about three warnings. <laughs> can, I, can, it, can, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? God does not allow anyone to fall into a pit without first giving them warning, right? And I, I stated that in my last video as well, the one I made about a week ago, um, about the... um. The chewing out a person is being chewed out by the warnings, right? The the warnings from God. God was telling them, "Hey, don't do this, don't do this." So that person already know I was forewarned. I got myself into this. I gotta clean it up. So they got a lot of stuff they gotta do on that end. You hear me? There's a lot of things that they trying to fix, and they don't really know how to do it because God told them, "Don't do it." And it's not to say that God cannot fix the mess. No, God is allowing them to stay in that and feel, find a way to um, dig themselves out of that mess. Why? So they can learn to never get themselves in this mess again. Sometimes you don't. I'm just talk to the parents right quick or anybody that's dealt with children. Children can come along and write on their walls or whatever and uh mess up dishes and do all kind of stuff why because they don't know the work it takes to clean up a whole house once you know the work it takes to clean up a whole house you're very mindful about what you do because you don't want to do the work to redo it right so that is what the lord is allowing them to do it's not that god is not almighty and can't just fix the situation yes he can but because this person was so hard-headed because this person was so disobedient okay now you gotta learn you're gonna have to learn the labor that it takes to get out of this so you never want to do this again right and so um just going a little bit further with it as well i'm going back into the bible right um Back in 2 Samuel, now we're in chapter 12, when uh, Nathan gives David the rebuke, he says, you know, you have brought calamity upon your whole household. Your whole household, your whole lineage is about to be affected about this one act that you did and that baby about to die. So now we move along and we find out not only in chapter 12 does the baby die, but also um, in chapter 13, David's daughter Tamar, she gets raped. So you mean to tell me? 
a rape, a death, two deaths, all came out of some lust. I'm telling you right, you guys right now, that's how tumultuous it is on that side. That's how bad it is on that side. Okay, so guys, I'm back. Um, excuse me for that little uh, interruption, but all right, so let's just recap everything that's going on because it's a lot. Now y'all see what's going on on that other end, the reason why the Lord had me deliver that word last weekend about... Um, Pray for that person because it's bad on the other side. And, you know, we're just uh, using uh, 2 Samuel and David and Bathsheba's situation to just show you how dark and how nasty it is when you unpack all of this stuff. It is just terrible. Can you just imagine being in this situation like, like wow, like it's a lot going on. But <clears throat> now let's talk about Bathsheba. Because remember, it's more than just David, Uriah, and the baby. <laughs> you know, Tamar done got affected. I mean, it's all kind of stuff, right? But let's talk about Bathsheba. Let's, let, let's just make Bathsheba into real time, right? Bathsheba was a girl, all right? And you actually, when you go to um, 2 Samuel chapter 12, Nathan gives a beautiful illustration about Uriah's in Bathsheba's relationship about how Bathsheba was all he had and how he would cuddle with her. I mean, it, they had a real love story, right? So they Bathsheba and Uriah had a real love story. So what would make her, you know, this girl, you know, just go into the palace of this, you know, David at the time was acting like a peeping time, right? <laughs> it was acting like a peeping Tom, <laughs> you know, just, you know, go and just um, lay with him, knowing she was married, knowing she in love with another man. Why? Because David was the man, right? Like, so David is dealing with lust. She dealing with idolatry, right? So now one of them are in love with each other. She was in love with somebody else. She was in love with somebody else. But, you know, this King David, you know, he got a whole fame about him, you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure she was around when they were singing, uh, Saul killed 1,000, David killed kill 10, you know. She know who he is, you know, and his stature. And, you know, and the Bible also says that, you know, he was, um, he had a good appearance about him. So he attracted, he got this status with him. He the man, you know. And so, he dealing with lust. She dealing with idolatry. Man, I'm telling you guys, your counterfeit situation is a recipe for disaster. Now, mind you, come on, let me, let this minister to somebody. Both of them are good looking people. Both of them are good looking people. So, and we live in this uh, Instagram couple goals you know, hashtag this, hashtag that. And we, in ourselves, we can get caught up in the look of it, right? And sometimes if we're not careful, we can fall into that whole idolatry thing, thinking, oh, man, look at them. They look good together. They must be happy. Look, let's go back to the Bible. David looked at um, Bathsheba and said, this girl has un un unusual beauty. The Bible also said that David had a good appearance. So on the outside looking in, they look like they could be a good looking couple, right? But behind closed doors, it's a whole lot of calamity going on. So let's move forward. We're talking about Bathsheba, right? Because here's the thing about it. <clears throat> Sometimes, and I, I think I said this in one of my previous videos. We need to stop saying counterfeit, counterfeit, counterfeit. And that's just pointing that, uh, pointing that person out as if they are Satan himself. That person may have been sinned by Satan, but they were used by Satan as well. Come on, y'all. Let's walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Let's walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Let's have some long-suffering. Let's love. Let's walk in love. That person was used by Satan. Right? And I'm talking about the per the counterfeit. We need to stop just demonizing this person. Yeah, these people can be some nasty people, but God loves them too. And God loves their soul. God wants to save their soul as well. 
and you don't have to worry about any type of tactic that they might do to you. Let me tell you something. There is no name higher than the name of God, than the name of Jesus. All right. Um, you who are uh, uh, aligned in position with Christ, uh, you're already victorious. That person is already defeated. Anything that they say or anything that they try to do is just uh, it's like the talk of a sore loser. OK, so don't worry about them. Pray for them because they are being used in a hurt. They know their time is up. Put you, uh, come on, let's let's talk about Bathsheba. Let's talk about the counterfeit. Let's talk about the counterfeit. She know she was she was used, and in her being used in a weak moment, on both of their parts, and not only do I lose my first child, she was a virgin. I lost my virginity to somebody who didn't love me. I lost my first child to somebody who didn't love me. And I lost the love of my life to somebody who didn't love me. Y'all, I'm telling you, this stuff is nasty. This stuff is not good. And the reason why the Lord has allowed me to look at this with such illumination is because I've been there before. I'm telling you from personal experience, I have been there before. That's why I can look at this situation and it's like it's playing out right in front of me because it literally played out in my life. Bathsheba. Like I said, go back to it. Let's just, you know, replace that with your counterfeit, with the counterfeit. Let's say that's the counterfeit. Yeah, this person going to probably say some crazy stuff on social media. Yeah, this person going to probably call you disrespectful or whatever. This person know they was used. This person lost a lot. Like I said, let's let's just get out the whole they counterfeit demonizing them. This not, that's a person too. That's a person too that got used in this process by Satan. That's why God ain't gonna clean this up. Why would God go good clean up the dirty work of the devil? That's that's no, that don't make no sense. None at all. Gotta get rid of it all. Right? So, you know, pray for that counterfeit, too. They may do some crazy stuff. They may try to, you know, I don't know. You know, you just pray protection over your family, your house, your belongings. Some people be crazy. They probably try to key your car, slash the tire. I don't know. But I, I stand in prayer with you against that stuff as well. In the mighty name of Jesus, no weapon formed against you, me. No one shall prosper, especially if it came from the uh, tactics of the enemy. This person is acting out because they were used. And they lost a lot for nothing. I understand it because I have a heart and I've been in this situation. But this person lost a lot for nothing. I'm telling you, that side over there is dark. And now let's go back to David. David has the weight of the world on his shoulders because not only does he have a kingdom to run, he still got battles to fight. He still got other wives. He still got other children. And now I got this big scandal breaking out. Y'all, it's not pretty on that end. Be thankful you are in darkness. But not, not in darkness, but you know what I'm saying? Be thankful that you don't know what's going on on that end. Be thankful that you are not uh, wefted in that situation over there. I'm telling you, if your uh, kingdom spouse, your God-ordained spouse is not communicating with you at this time, it's because they know what's going on on that end. And in this person, out of their respect and love for you and how they feel about you, they want you to keep you just the way they found you in perfect peace. See, <clears throat> to them, you're all draped in white. You're like godly, right? They muddy. They don't want to put this dirty mud on you. They don't want to get you engulfed in their trashy situation. I'm telling you. <clears throat> so, just to recap, Bathsheba 
is representing the counterfeit, she going through it too. You know, and then you have to think about it like, okay, and as you read, as you continue reading uh, uh, sec, uh, Second Samuel, you know, David just went on ahead and just made her another one of his wives. So this girl lost everything. She lost her virginity. She lost her first child and she lost the love of her life. Just to be trampled by this man. He ain't even King David no more. So all the things, and that's another thing. Come on now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this beautiful revelation. All the things that she um, <clears throat> idolized about him, it, it just it dissipated. It went away. Because now she see him for who he truly is. Who he tr he, Yeah, who he truly is. I'm sorry, y'all. When I get on here, all... all all Ebonics just come to life, okay? All, all correct enunciation of anything uh, just go away. But anyway, you know, she see him for who he truly is. And um, she no longer, you know, respects him. You know, um, I'm just saying this for your counterfeit. You know, something had to draw them together. Something had to, to, to um, attract them to each other. But now that she see who he really is... She don't love him that way. She don't love him that way. Let me tell you something. If she is trying to stay into his life, if she is trying to um, be a part of his life, it's because she felt like something, she feels like something is owed to her. I'm not speaking about your counterfeit. Now, this can be male or female or whatever. Some people don't just want to feel like a total loser, right? It ain't no love. You know, some people, they're not mature enough to just be like, you know what? I've taken enough blows. Let me just walk away. No. Some people feel like, nah, I didn't go through all of this for nothing. They want to stay just for the sake of not feeling like a complete loser. Just so they won't feel like I was used, abused, and then I just lost it all. They dealing with hurt, shame, embarrassment, loss, all at the same time. I'm still talking about the counterfeit. So if this person is seeming like like they trying to hold on to your kingdom spouse, it's because you know as stated before, they they don't they not they don't want to be a complete, you know, total loser. You know, like they don't. <laughs> you know, some people when their eyes are finally open, they're like, I can't believe I was that dumb. I can't believe I was that dumb. Like, I really love a person. Mind you, God got somebody for everybody. <laughs> so, your counterfeit, that, excuse me, your kingdom spouse counterfeit, have a real love in their life. Have a real love in their life. Ooh, you know what movie just came to me? Right as I'm talking, um, Carmen Jones. Um, the Carmen Jones with uh, Harry Belafonte and... Um, Come on, what's her name? Dorothy Dandridge. You know, he fell for Dorothy Dandridge, but he had a, a love, a real love for him, right? So, you know, that counterfeit has somebody that really loved them, right? That person is out there, and they overlooking that real love, chasing after somebody who don't love them. <laughs> and that person chasing after somebody else. Which is you. I'm telling y'all. This stuff is a. It's a movie. I'm, this stuff is a movie. Alright so you guys. Sorry about that. But um, I'm actually going further. <laughs> and longer than I anticipated. But look you guys. I'm going to get this out. I'm going to get this out. Because the Lord pressed it up on my heart. And I know somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this. This is going to bless so many people. I already know. This is going to give you comfort. This is going to really allow you just. Um be easy you know and just uh have a sense of peace in this whole situation i think it's going to give a lot of people comfort and i pray that it does man i'm telling you i went through this <laughs> i went through this but anyway so just to recap everything we've talked about the situation and how it's just terrible we talked about david we talked about Bathsheba. you know the counterfeit Right. And how all of this is tying in together. But let me go back to David. OK. And <clears throat> I'm I'm a, I'm a go. I'm a toggle back and forth between David and your kingdom spouse. Now, let me just throw this in. Men, this could be for you as well. OK. So don't just get, um, 
you know, um, dead bolted on, I'm using David and thinking this is only a women's issue. You know, your, uh, prodigal spouse could be a David in this situation. I'm just letting you um, know how nasty a situation can be on that end. So you are, you have peace and you are okay with being separated from your kingdom spouse at this moment. And you are actually, um, like I said, at peace with not having no communication. I'm just trying to let you guys know um, how tumultuous it can be on that side and how actually you, God keeping you separated is actually your for your protection because whenever these unions do come about it's going to be godly it's going to be good it is going to be a praise report if you intermingle right now you're going to get smudged you're going to get tainted so i know this message is going to bless a multitude of people but let me go back to it right now because let me tell you how your david is right now right so David, you know, he got caught all, all in the web of this thing, right? But we always talk about how David was a man after God's own heart. This is true. But let's talk about David's heart, right? And I'm coming to you guys from um, 2 Samuel chapter 12. So the Lord sent Nathan, the prophet, to tell David this story. There were two men in a certain town. One was rich and one was poor. The rich man owned a, owned a great many sheep and cattle. The poor man owned nothing but one little lamb he had bought. He raised that little lamb, and it grew up with his children. It ate from the man's own plate and drank from his cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. One day, a guest arrived at the home of the rich man. But instead of killing an animal from his own flock or herd, he took the poor man's lamb and killed it and prepared it for his guests. David was furious. As surely as the Lord lives, he vowed, any man who would do such a thing deserves to die. He must repay four lambs to the poor man for the one he stole for having no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are that man. The Lord of God, Israel says, I anointed you king of Israel and I saved you from the power of Saul. I gave you your master's house and his wife and the kingdoms, kingdoms of Israel and Judah. And if that not had been enough, I would have given you much, much more. Why then have you despised the word of the God and done this, the word of the God of the Lord, excuse me, and done this horrible deed? So now, David, your kingdom spouse, is aware of what they did in the sight of God, not just what they did and what they can cover up, you know, what they can finagle and, you know, whatever. Now it has seeped into the crevices of their heart about what they have done, even in the sight of the Lord. Your prodigal, your kingdom spouse is saying, I done messed it up with everybody. This is why I said in that last video, pray for this person if go back to that last video i said some of these people are suicidal y'all when i made that video i had no idea i was going to be talking about this tonight it is 12 28 it's february 20th now because i done crossed over you know just <laughs> running my mouth <laughs> well excuse me i ain't running my mouth excuse me i'm preaching the gospel i had to correct myself but um when i first had given that word last week i had no idea i was going to be talking about this not at all. But the Lord is really hearing the prayers and the cries of his children and of his people. And he's letting you guys know, I hear you. Here's what's going on. Here's why. Look, God is not going to dangle something over your head just for the sake of dangling it over your head and never give it to you. He wouldn't be good. He wouldn't be God if he was doing something like that. He don't do no stuff like that. That's not him. Now you see why you have to stay in prayer, not just for yourself, for the union, but also for that person. It's a lot going on, you guys. So as stated before, you know, David, now he realizing, oh, my gosh, like I done messed it up with everybody. Even God is not pleased with me right now. And I love God. <laughs> I love God. 
God is not happy with me. So that is how your God ordained spouse, how they're feeling right now. They're like, oh my gosh, like they're not happy with themselves. And if things couldn't get any worse, I'm telling you. Let's just pause. I'm going to say this. And I pray that you get clarity when I say this. I pray that you get revelation when I say this. Meeting you to your kingdom spouse, to, in their perspective, was a gift and a curse. It was a gift because you brought light to them. You made them smile. You gave them hope. It was good to see that God had come into their life in human form and reached out the hand to them and um, extended himself, you know, um, to help get them out of pit. So that was the gift. The curse is this. Why now? Why couldn't I have met you sooner? Why couldn't I have met you later? Why couldn't I have met you at a different time and place? Why, God? So just like, oh, my gosh, oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. You guys, just like some of you may be feeling like God, you know, presented your kingdom spouse to you and then took them away. And now you're not in communication. God is telling you to pray for this person. Just like you feel like God had dangled that idea over your head and it's really not coming into fruition or you don't see any light of that. Your God ordained spouse feels the exact same way. Like, God, you know, I met, I met the right person at the wrong time. They feel as if, oh man, it was dangled. Uh, the idea of a perfect relationship was dangled above their head as well. But listen, God is giving you a person to pray for, and um, and God is giving them something to pray for as well. So this is why this is going to be a kingdom marriage. This is why this is going to be God ordained. This is why it's going to be blessed. Because in the midst of this. Both of you guys are praying and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. You throwing prayers out that way. They doing prayers out to your way as well. How else? Come on. Think about it in your natural mind and in your life. When is the last time you ever was able to stand for something or for someone and you didn't get no fruit out of it? You know, you wasn't getting nothing out of it. It was like it <laughs> Nothing was um, bearing fruit, but you still stayed. Why? Because somebody is praying for you to do so. It's like that Bryson Tiller song, Exchange. Lord, just save her for me. You know, that's what he's saying. Just save them for me. That's why you're able to stand. That's why when them times when you feel like giving up, you're able to just, you, you don't know where the strength comes from to just stay a little longer in this. This is why even though sometimes, like, let's keep it a buck 50. Some of you have may even pray to God and say, God, you know, um, <laughs> you know, is, is this little experiment over with? Is this assignment through? Because I'm ready to move on. But no, God was like, nah, it's not over with. Because that person is praying that you stay as well. Listen, going back to the scripture, David's eyes and heart was open. Your God ordained spouse uh, eyes and heart is open. Uh, just going back to the original message. These people are in a situation they don't want to be in. Your God ordained spouse and a counterfeit. I don't care what they trying to cover up. I don't care what it looked like. They trying to fix garbage garbage. They trying to <laughs> come on now. They got, they, they, man, <laughs> if you were in that situation as well, and you, you know, you have a heart, right? You're going to try to fix it before you walk away too. You're going to try to, you know, just <laughs> shake some hands, you know, um, you know, so to speak, like, you know, um, Make amends with people. You're going to try to have this thing in as peacefully as possible. Why? Because you know how nasty it is. Right? And that's what's going on on that end. But before I close this message, this is something that the Lord pressed upon me, on my heart, as I was delivering this message. 
If this word has blessed you, God is telling you to sow into it. I have never said this in any one of my videos. I have never said this in any one of my videos. I'm going to repeat it. I've never said this in any one of my videos. But God wants you to sow into this word. Not for me. I work. I work for mine. Okay? No, I... Mm -mm. And people have sown into me. Um, and I'm very appreciative of it. I pray over every seed. I pray over every person. I really do. Um, I pray over every seed that has been sown into me. But God wants this. This came to my heart and it was pressed in my heart. <clears throat> God wants to if, if this message has blessed you to sow into it. Number one, because it gave you peace and it gave you comfort about a situation that was causing you discomfort. Number two. God wants you to sow into this word because me and my life, the reason why I'm able to just dish this out to you is because I went through it so you wouldn't have to go through it. And number three, most importantly, this is most important. The reason why God wants you to sow into this word is because I got victory in this situation. You're talking to someone who overcame this thing twice, right? I overcame this thing twice. So whenever you sow into this word, whenever you sow into me, you're not only sowing into me just for the sake of sowing into me, but you're also partaking in my victory. It's like being a stockholder, right? You have a share in this victory. You have a legal right of ownership in this victory, right? So... Whoever this is for, and I, I, you know, the Bible says test all spirits. So as the Lord was putting it in my heart, you know, to tell you guys to sow into this word, this came as well. Test the spirit. Whatever dollar amount that you want to sow into this word, give half. Initially, at first, just give half. And see if that don't come back to you in some form of way, whether it be money, whether it be communication, whether it be resolve on that other end. However, when it does come back and it bears fruit, that's when you come back and you give the rest. And I know I, I'm going to look at I'm like, OK, whoever came back and gave the rest. All right. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it worked, you know, and I believe the word of God. So it just stayed in before, you know, um, just to wrap up this whole thing, your counter, the counterfeit is going through it. Your kingdom spouse is going through it. You are not in the dark. You are being protected. And I pray that this video give you comfort in your protection. OK, look. God is not playing with these kingdom marriages. As stated before in the beginning of the video, the enemy has his whole agenda. Just trying to defile everything, you know, just trying to break up anything that God has um, established. So, yes, that's why this is really important. God is going to get these um, kingdom marriages out. You stay in faith. But this is definitely like a, um, a sip of water right this is definitely like some comforting food while you're on your journey and i know it is and it stated before i went through these things and i came out of both of those instances <laughs> right <laughs> shoot i did it so you wouldn't have to go through it just let that sizzle in your spirit a little bit so anyway you guys i love you it is in the wee, wee hours of the morning i always do my videos in the wee hours of the morning i'm gonna start calling this glory talks after dark that's what I'm going to start doing. But anyway, I love you guys with the love of Christ. Be blessed. Take every word into prayer. Take every word into prayer. God loves you more than you'll ever know. He loves you, your soul.